Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 3.2 finding probabilities for normal distributions. 3.2 represents chapter 3, section 2 of the Pearson A level Master Applied Maths Year 2 textbook. Let's go through the key fact of this section. You can find probabilities for a normal distribution using the normal distribution function on your calculator. Here is my example. Ladies and gents, x takes on a normal distribution with mean 30 and variance 4 squared. So the mean mu is equal 30 and the variance sigma squared is equal 4 squared. The standard deviation sigma is the square root of the variance. Square root 4 squared is just 4. Find part A probability x is less than 33. The first step is to rewrite this probability using negative infinity. So we have that this probability is equal to the probability of x is less than 33 but more than negative infinity. We're going to calculate this probability using the normal CD function in our class with calculator. Before I show you how to use a normal CD function, I'm going to illustrate this probability on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. So the bell-shaped curve is centered at the mean mu, which is 30. 33 is more than 30, so we can position 33 somewhere over here. Probability x is less than 33 represents the shading to the left of 33, which is this shading here. Now from this bell-shaped curve, we see that the lower limit has to equal minus infinity. But minus infinity is undefined. We have to select a suitable number as a substitution of minus infinity. It will be a three-digit number. So we can take a number far more smaller than 33, that will be minus 1,000. So the lower limit is minus 1,000. The upper limit, on the other hand, is just 33. The mean mu is equal 30, and the standard deviation sigma is equal 4. Okay, so these are the important quantities. I'm going to be using the normal CD function to calculate this probability to four decimal places. So we start by pressing menu, followed by scrolling down to number seven, distribution, press equal, then press number two, normal CD. In part A, the lower limit is minus 1000, equal, the upper limit is 33, equal, the standard deviation is four, equal, and the mean is 30, equal. So this is my answer. If I round it to four decimal places, I get 0 0.7734. Using the normal CD function, we get that probability x is less than 33 is equal to 0 0.7734 to four decimal places. Let's move on to part B. Probability x is greater than or equal to 24. The first step is to rewrite this probability using positive infinity. So probability x is greater than or equal to 24 can be rewritten as probability of x is greater than or equal to 24 but less than positive infinity. Now for normal distribution, x equal 24 for example is a vertical straight line cutting at 24. A vertical straight line contributes to zero area. So we can actually get rid of the equal. It will not influence the probability. So we can rewrite this probability as the probability of x is greater than 24 but less than positive infinity. So I'm going to calculate this probability using the normal CD function in my class with calculator. Before I show you how to use the normal CD function to calculate this probability, I'm going to illustrate this probability on a bell-shaped curve. Here is my bell-shaped curve. As before, the bell-shaped curve is centred at mu equal 30. We've got 24, which is less than 30, so 24 is positioned to the left of 30, so somewhere over here. We want the probability of x being greater than or equal to 24, so we want the area to the right of 24, which is this area here. Now, from this bell-shaped curve, we can see that the lower limit is equal to 24, the upper limit is actually positive infinity, which is undefined, so we have to use a number as a substitution for positive infinity. So it will be a three-digit number, which is far more greater than 24. So we can take 1,000. 
mu is equal 30 and the standard deviation sigma is equal 4. So now I'm going to be using these important quantities to calculate this particular probability using the normal CD function to four decimal places. We can start by pressing menu. We go to number seven distribution, press equal, press number two normal CD. In part B, the lower limit is 24, equal. The upper limit is 1000, equal. The standard deviation is 4, equal, and the mean is 30, equal. Press equal again, this is what we get. So to four decimal places, we've got 0 0.9332. Using the normal CD function, we get that probability x is greater than or equal to 24 is equal to 0 0.9332 to four decimal places. Let's have a look at part C. So in part C, we want to work out the probability that x is more than 33.5, but less than 38.2. The lower limit and the upper limit is clearly seen in the question, so we can go straight into calculating the probability using the normal CD function. Now before I apply the normal CD function to calculate this probability, I'm going to illustrate this probability on a bell-shaped curve. So here is my bell-shaped curve. Again, centered at the mean 30. 38.2 is a number greater than 30, so we can position 38.2 somewhere here. 33.5 is also a number greater than 30, so we can position 33.5 somewhere over here. So we want the probability that x is between 33.5 and 38.2. That represents this particular area. So from this bell-shaped curve, we can clearly see that the lower limit is 33.5, the upper limit is 38.2, the mean mu is 30, and the standard deviation sigma is equal to 4. So I'm going to be using these important quantities and the normal CD function to work out this probability to four decimal places. So we start by pressing menu. We go to number seven distribution, press equal, press number two normal CD. In part C, the lower limit is 33.5 equal, the upper limit is 38.2 equal, the standard deviation is 4 equal, and the mean is 30 equal. Press equal again, this is what we get. So to four decimal places, we've got 0 0.1706. Using the normal CD function, we get that this probability is equal to 0 0.1706 to four decimal places. Let's have a look at part D, the final part of my example. Probability x is less than 27 or x is greater than 32. Interesting. We're going to straight away illustrate this on a bell-shaped curve in order to break down what this probability will look like. So here is my bell-shaped curve. Centered at the mean 30. So 27 is less than 30, we can put 27 somewhere here. And 32 is more than 30, so we can put 32 somewhere over here. So we want x is less than 27, so the area to the left of 27. Or x is greater than 32, so the area to the right of 32. Now, ladies and gents, to calculate that area plus that area and add it together to give us this probability, we can easily do this probability is equal 1 minus the probability that x is between 27 and 32. Okay, that's what we're after. Now over here we can see that the lower limit is 27, the upper limit is 32, we know that the mean mu is equal 30 and the standard deviation sigma is equal 4. So now I'm going to use the normal CD function in order to calculate this probability to 4dp then I'll do one takeaway that in order to get the final answer. Okay, so we start by pressing menu, go to number seven distribution, press equal, number two, normal CD. In part D, the lower limit is 27, equal, the upper limit is 32, equal, standard deviation is four, equal, and the mean is 30, equal press equal again, 
and we get that probability x is between 27 and 32 is 0 0.4648 to four decimal places. We then do one take away this answer and we get 0 0.5352 to four decimal places. So using the normal CD function, we get that the probability that x is between 27 and 32 is equal to 0 0.4648 to four decimal places. Then one takeaway that gives us the final answer, 0 0.5352 to four decimal places. So the probability that x is less than 27 or x is more than 32, in other words, these two areas added together is technically 0 0.5352 to four decimal places. And that there, ladies and gents, completes my example. Moving on to an exam style question. The amount of jam J grams in each jar produced by a factory is modelled as J takes on a normal distribution with mean 454 and variance 5.6 squared. So we know that the mean mu is equal 454 and the variance sigma squared is equal 5.6 squared. Hence the standard deviation sigma is equal 5.6. A jar is selected at random. Part A, find the probability that the jar contains more than 460 grams of jam. Let's have a look at part A. So in part A, we are trying to calculate the probability that J is greater than, more than 460 grams. We're going to rewrite this using positive infinity. So this is equal to the probability that J is greater than 460, but less than positive infinity. So we're going to calculate this probability using the normal CD function in our class with calculator. Okay, so from here we can see that the lower limit is 460, the upper limit positive infinity which is undefined, we must pick a number four more greater than 460, a four digit number, so as a default we can now use 10,000 as our upper limit. Uh, the mean mu is equal 454, the standard deviation sigma is equal 5.6. So now I can apply the normal CD function to calculate this probability. So using the normal CD function, I get 0 0.1420 to four decimal places. The jars pass a quality control test if they contain between 452 grams and 458 grams of jam. Part B, find the probability that a jar will pass the quality control test. Okay, so we've got pass a quality Control test. The following condition must be satisfied. J has to be more than 452 grams, but less than 458 grams. We want the probability of this happening. So we're trying to calculate the probability that 452 is less than J, which is less than 458. We're going to calculate this using the normal CD function in our class with calculator. So if we look at this, we can see that the lower limit, ladies and gents, is 452. The upper limit is 458. The mean mu is 454. And the standard deviation sigma is 5.6. Okay, so I can apply the normal CD function now to calculate this probability. So this probability is equal to 0 0.4020 to four decimal places. So probability that a jar will pass the quality control test is 0 0.4020 to four decimal places. A sample of 18 jars is taken. 18 jars. So we have a fixed number of trials this indicates a binomial distribution within a normal distribution question. Find the probability that at least 15 pass the quality control test. <clears throat> Firstly, we're going to define a new random variable. Let x be the number of jars that pass the quality control test. Okay, so we know that x 
takes on a binomial distribution. We have a fixed number of trials, in this case it is 80, with a fixed probability P, where P is the probability of passing the quality control test. So P from part B is the probability that J is between 452 and 458. We've calculated this already. It is 0 0.4020. Okay, so that's my p-value within the binomial distribution. So what I want is the probability that at least 15 pass the quality control test. That means 15 or more. So I'm after the probability that x is 15 or more. So x is greater than or equal to 15. Now we need to rewrite this in order to use the binomial CD function. Ladies and gents, the binomial CD function can only be used for less than or equal to. So this here is equivalent to 1 minus probability x is less than 15. Less than 15 because over here 15 is included. Let's take it a step further. We've got 1 minus the probability of. If x is less than 15, that means x has to be less than or equal to 14. So that there satisfies our condition of using a binomial CD function less than or equal to. So what we have here is that capital N, the number of trials is 80. P, the fixed probability is um, 0 0.4020. Lowercase x is going to be 14. So now we're going to apply the binomial CD function to calculate this probability to four decimal places. So I've got one minus, applying the binomial CD function gives me 0 0.9998. So one takeaway that will just be 0 0.0002. Okay, so that's my answer to four decimal places. So the probability that at least 15 pass the quality control test is a very small probability. It is 0 0.0002. This completes my exam style question and this teaching video 3.2 finding probabilities for normal distributions. If you found the teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.